extremely low altitudes, high to low, and also in a hit to kill kind of a situation as far as the what we call as the, 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 the ship targets are concerned. Its land version is also being done today. So it has now place for the Indian Army. It has a place for uh, in the in, with the Indian Navy. And finally, we will be in a position to integrate with some of the uh, aircrafts also. That is the plan. And variety of targets it can engage. But the technology which is unique to this are canisterized system, towing head, which can be for variety of targets, and a very light cruise, uh, what we call as a liquid run jet propulsion system, which is part of this missile. Next, please. Now, some of the current missions which are next, which are going on, which are basically for producing these kind of missile systems in large quantities. Uh, uh, today, the Indian Air Force and Indian Army, as well as the Indian Navy needs for its tactical air defense scenario, uh, air defense missiles of 12 kilometer range, 70 kilometer range. Obviously, these missiles are required as part of the integrated air defense network. So, we developed three systems today, what we call as LRSAM for uh, the Indian Navy, which can be launched from the ship in a salvo mode and this what you, and a SRSAM, which is for the Indian Air Force for meeting the 12 kilometer kind of uh, scenario and uh, MRSAM, which will be for the Air Force for meeting the 70 kilometer engagement of the aircraft. What you see here is a very state of the art missile system with the range of 15 kilometers. It has been designed with smokeless propellants, low aspect ratio wings and uh, jet wings for the initial uh, control activity using some of the best materials like silicon carbon, carbon silicon carbide kind of material. But all these systems today work in a weapon system mode with the, what we call as a radar, the data links, the canister launchers, mobility, and they can be integrated with what they have as the ACCS system, the air defense network. So they are enabled for network centric warfare. Next please. This is uh, a typical scenario of a LRSM. Now this we are building with the help with in collaboration with IAI and uh, production partners are Bharat Electronics, Bharat uh, Dynamics Limited. It is a very sleek missile, range of about 70 kilometers and uh, has a dual pulse rocket motor. Now this is yet another technology which is emerging, basically to shape the trajectory right from boost to the ultimate hit uh, to kill scenario where you can have a solid rocket motor pulsing in two or three pulses. And finally, the homing head in a position to engage the target at low altitudes, high altitudes to give you very, very high single shot kill probability. Now, you can see the entire uh, fire control system which is visible here, which is not only integrating the, the, the missile system with the help of a four panel phased array radar, which is able to capture the targets flying at almost 300 kilometers and uh, then able to guide it through a data link but also to control large number of other sh uh, weapons which are part of the uh, ship's uh, arsenal. Next, please. We have uh, in GRDO taken up a program basically as an offshoot to, to counter what is happening in our neighborhood. Today, more than 31 countries have got ballistic missiles. And in our neighborhood, we have large number of ballistic missile uh, capabilities which exist. So obviously, uh, with our policy of no first use, it is imperative that we launch on to what is called the ballistic missile defense. So we had uh, three options analyzed, the boost phase intercept, the mid-course intercepts, and the terminal phase intercept. We find that the terminal phase intercept is the best possible option available to us, both from the geographical considerations as well as from the technology strengths what we have. So we have taken the option of going for a late mid-course, as we call it, or the terminal phase uh, kind of a situation. Each one has its advantages and disadvantages. The main problem in these cases is that the closing speeds for these missiles being very high. Whether the, a missile of something like 5,000 kilometer is coming to you at a speed of about 5,000 or 4,000 meters per second, and you are going at about 3,000 meters per second, obviously you have 7 to 8 kilometers per second kind of a scenario. So reaction times required are very large. So technology associated with this have been developed. I am going to showcase some of them. Next, please. We have uh, built uh, today a two-layer defense system in which one can engage a ballistic missile at exo-atmosphere, what is called about 70 to 82 kilometers up to 100 kilometers altitude, and any leakers down there can be engaged in an atmospheric below 30 kilometers. The whole philosophy is that you should be able to track the target using long-range radars right in the beginning, 
and then based upon the data coming from the radars, you are in a position to evaluate what is the type of missile it is, whether it is a 5000 kilometer, 3000 kilometer, 2000 kilometer and then work out an instant of launch. So with the mobile launchers and a ground the launch control center and a mission control center, the entire network does automatic computation of instant of launch of the interceptor and interceptors are launched in salvo to engage the missiles at uh, altitudes which are pre-estimated and any leakers are taken in the endo atmosphere, the philosophy remains same. Next. This is the completely wide area network in which the radars, the interceptors, the data links and uh, the fire control systems all are distributed based on an IP based wide area network and you have uh, mobile communication terminals connecting the missile launch batteries, the long range radars, the target update transmitters which transmit the data right from the beginning to the interceptors and thereby enabling the guidance. This entire system works on triple redundancy on communication with latency of information about the target maintained to less than a few milliseconds. Next please. This is the mission control center which is actually doing the whole intelligent operations of the of this particular ballistic missile system, defense system where you have uh, the complete air situation picture available from the radars. You have discrimination of the target with respect to satellite, aircraft, ballistic missiles or any other object which is flying in the atmosphere and then it should be able to do the classification, the, then the instant of launch, prioritization and finally even the kill assessment. In our scenario we intend to use what is called the policy of shoot, shoot, shoot. Not the shoot, look, shoot because of the time available in our scenario is not enough. So this complete system works on distributed network fully on a bus where all the decisions are automated. Next please. This is how the technologies have been developed. We have built a what is called an endo atmospheric interceptor, a solid rocket, uh, single stage solid rocket motor with inertial navigation for net coast guidance and the seeker, RF seeker for the end game guidance with maneuver capability of this missile something like 25G to 30G at almost 15 to 20 kilometers altitude and uh, you can see the jet wings which are there made out of carbon and carbon silicon carbide for doing the initial control operations. We have a two stage system here which uses a three propulsion system and a second stage for extra atmospheric interception. We are also building for engaging the targets at 5000 of 5000 kilometer class AD1 and AD2 missile systems with IR seeker, divert and attitude control systems which can give you in the end game almost 5 to 6 G of maneuver to bring down the errors in few milliseconds and that is a solid rocket motor which is being planned to work on a piff paff board thereby you should be able to do some kind of a proportional control of correction of your error. And uh, some other mechanisms basically because there are hypersonic missiles flying in atmosphere so one need to do a very good CFD work on the hypersonics. Next please. All the missiles are, as the missiles are growing, the ballistic missiles are going to come with the countermeasures. So the technology which is required to be embedded in the, in the, in the present interceptors are basically to counter the decoys, the decoys discrimination and then lacking on to that. The, what kind of balloons will be there, anti-simulator decoys will be there as well as radar decoys will be there. Similarly, the endo atmosphere, the, the missiles will be in a position to take wide maneuvers as just now we saw what the uh, UAVs were doing. So the missile will be also doing wide maneuvers, then we have uh, decoys also coming at that point in time. All these have to be now integrated as part of the ballistic missile defense so that we can integrate and make the system more and more robust. Next please. To handle the situation of MIRVs because we are likely to encounter situation where MIR will be released and uh, although we have the capability today to launch against at a, at, against variety of targets almost about six simultaneously coming missiles we can engage. But one MIR, one uh, IRBM or ICBM can launch more than that. So in that case we have to build what is called the multiple kill vehicle. The concept is same as we have in the case of MIRVs. One mother missile will be releasing multiple kill vehicles and each will be guided against that. We have started a lot of work on that but the main thing here is the miniaturization of your homing heads. because. Each